Okay, after the lesson. So there's only a couple of points here, inshallah, and then we can be after the lesson as well. <laughs> Before the lesson finishes, which is towards the end of the lesson, then the person should make sure that he or she does not pack up before the teacher. So he should not move, pack up, or leave before the teacher. And this goes back to having the manners. Imagine you're having a conversation with someone, the teacher comes and he speaks to everyone individually. Don't think that he's speaking to us as a group. So if I turn around, it's not a big deal. Or if I text, uh, I don't know, if I Uber eat someone, it's not a big deal. Someone is talking to you, how do you feel if someone is you're talking to someone and at the same time they just message you like this? Disrespectful. Disrespectful. You feel like what's happening? How you know if you in the middle of the conversation, you know they say, oh well, you know, uh, and you think they're gonna finish, so you just get up and go. <laughs> you say assalamu alaikum. <laughs> so the student then, as students, we should not move and not pack up, or you know leave before the teacher. Of course, if there is a reason, no problem. Just just because the teacher is finishing up or is starting to take questions, then everyone packs up. Even if the teacher cannot see you. Some people may be online, they think, oh, I can do it. But this knowledge is between you and Allah. How you behave in the lesson is not about just the teacher. So for example, if the teacher that comes to teach you is blind, it doesn't mean you can lie down. Would you? No. So just because you are behind the curtain or the lesson is on the top floor and you're, there's no space, so you're, doesn't mean you cannot do, behave in a way that is not appropriate because that is a respect of the knowledge, it's not a respect just of a human being. Okay, so that's towards the end of the lesson. Then, before, ideally, you know, if the, if the time uh, is appropriate, then before you leave a lesson, especially if it's a specific, well, any lesson really, just quickly look over your notes, read through notes that you made, and clarify anything that's ambiguous. Sometimes we write something in a hurry. And if we go back to it after a month, a week, before next lesson, or after three or four days, we don't remember what we wrote. But if we go back to it straight away in that sitting, it's still fresh in our minds. So we can just quickly, okay, that squiggle there was the word hadith. And that squiggle there meant sahih. So you just quickly clarify it and then you can go. So as soon as the lesson finish, you've stood up, helped the sheikh to go to his car, taken his book or whatever, his bag, helped him. Yes, you come back quickly, finish off whatever you need to do. Just check, look for your notes, whatever you have, while still fresh in your mind, you clarify it. Then between that lesson and the next lesson, Try to set a day, a time, not a whole day, but a time in a day where you're going to revise. Especially if it's a specific lesson. Specific lesson, are you going for a book? So today, for example, you've done the chapter of purification. Next week, you do the chapter of um, uh, Salah this, and so forth, like that. Or you've done the, 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 bar, the chapter of water. Next week, you do the chapter of utensils or whatever the case may be. So before the next lesson, at least that chapter that you covered, you revised it once. And the best or better than that, you revising it by yourself, is you revising it with a classmate. Because when you revise it with a classmate, you will see things from a different point of view. Or you may correct some notes that you have incorrect. And you can practice explaining what you have said. So for example, you will say to him, oh, the Sheikh mentioned X, Y, Z. And when you read it, the person maybe doesn't understand the way you've said it. So you will say, what do you mean? And that will force you to think, to reword it in your own words, which will be an indication as to whether you understood it or not. If you find that you did not understand it, or you struggle, or there's a confusion, or maybe he has written, your classmate has written something, and you have written something opposite, then you can go back to the sheikh and ask, or to the teacher and ask. But that's very important. Don't let the week go and you go to the next class. 
and also connected to this revision, which is the last point, you should try to prepare for the new lesson. Connected to the revision, uh, the last point now, is that you should try to prepare for your new lesson. And that's by reading the text. And that's by reading just the text, not no one's explanation, just the text. Don't think it's something easy, but read the text. When you read the text, uh, try to understand it. What is the author saying? What's the point that's being made? How does, and the same thing, what does the point mean? And if he mentions an, uh, an ayah or hadith or evidence, then how is an evidence? Ask yourself these questions, because if you ask yourself these questions, it will increase your ability to think. Because you will see, okay, I'm understanding this, I'm not understanding it. It will force you to think. Whereas if you just go to lessons sometimes and teacher tells you everything, you'll be spoon fed. So as soon as the teacher is not there, you may not even be able to do something yourself. But once you force yourself to think, it's like when you're in the gym and you're pushing the last press up or whatever, you're forcing your body. When you force your mind to think, at times you will get it right. At times you will not get it right. But that process of doing it, will increase you bi'ithinillahi ta'ala and then you will come to lesson with new questions as well because you may not understand something you write the questions down those questions that by the end of that new lesson you have still not got from your teacher then you can ask them at the end straight away but you'll find that some of maybe write five questions some of those questions you'll find that you'll have ticked off because the teacher will have explained it in the class but of course with all of, well not all, but with many of the things that we mentioned now, you may find other teachers that say, don't do that. For example, some teachers will say, don't read the new part until your teacher has explained it to you. And they will say, why? Because if you read it, you may come to the wrong understanding and that will stick in your head. If you're someone like that, then yes. But generally speaking, this process of trying to understand things helps you because it makes you look at things analytically and be more uh, trying to understand things more. Okay, any questions?